Hello everybody and welcome to the Real Tarot 1123. I'm going to be doing the monthly astrology reading for all sun signs. This is for the month of November 2021. To all the newcomers, welcome. I'm so happy you have stopped by. Hopefully you'll stay with us and become a member of our real family. Um, please hit the subscribe button. <coughs> Excuse me. And please uh, hit the like button, the thumbs up and also hit the bell notification so you'll be notified whenever I put post um, new videos. I also do live readings every uh, Friday evening 7 p.m. Central Standard Time and those live readings are dedicated to criminal cases as in uh, cases uh, where we have missing people you know murdered and body not found or what really happened they're saying it was suicide but it's not you know things like that so th those Friday evening um, live streams are dedicated only for such cases um, and I don't uh, encourage any other subject to be introduced uh, at those because this is dedicated for the people who, you know, uh, victims, unfortunately. So uh, who need some kind of a resolution, some kind of a closure, you know, that sort of a thing. Um, and ev every first Saturday, <clears throat> excuse me, every first Saturday of every month, at 11 a.m. Central Standard Time, I do a live stream where I share my knowledge about tarot, numerology, astrology, palmistry, what have you, all things esoteric. So please do join us then. Uh, and uh, um, what else did I want to say? Oh my goodness. Uh, this Friday live stream, right? This Friday, the live stream, what date is it going to be? Um, the 5th of November um the live stream that i'm going to have friday evening 5th of november 7 pm i am going to do a little bit of um what's the word um, uh, a lucky winner type of thing okay um and of course before we start the live stream i'm going to make it known what the rules are etc um so people will know and uh, this is my way of saying thank you because i hit i have crossed the 10000 um subscriber i can't even speak what's going on i have crossed the ten thousand mark as far as subscribers are concerned so i want to uh you know just show my appreciation to you guys appreciation <laughs> to you guys so please do join us uh what i'm going to do is i will throw out or uh, use 10 random words or phrases okay 10 they could be random words or they could be a random words, a couple of random words and a couple of random phrases. Okay, like pie in the sky, okay, type of thing. I'm just giving you an example. No, I'm not going to use that uh, because not all of y'all know that. So just 10 random words and or phrases and which would be totally unrelated to, you know, the subject that we're going to be talking about or uh, the case that we're going to be discussing on the live stream. And the first uh 10 people right no i can't say 10 the first three people let me make that clear the first three people to get all of them right okay and email me are going to be winners now let me make it very very clear the first three people that get all the 10 right okay and email me now this competition is open only for the duration of the live stream <clears throat> excuse me so once you get all the 10 words okay or 10 phrases if you email me your email timing should be well within the period of time that i have the live stream on supposing i start the live stream at 7 pm and end at 9 pm Emails coming in to me between 7 p.m. and 9 p.m. are the only ones that are going to be uh, considered as winners, okay? If I get any emails after 9 p.m., I won't account for it. Because the last time I had one of these little kind of fun things, people were emailing me three days later and four days later and saying, oh, I got them all right, because they would go back and watch it on Rewind. And then they got, <laughs> I was like, that's not fair. So we are not going to do that. So if you send me your email before, not the comment section, don't put it in the comment section, don't put it in the live chat section, 
uh, you don't want to put it in the live chat section because somebody else may see it and may copy it, right? So please be sure to email me before the end of the live stream. So if I end the live stream at 9 p.m., I should have gotten your email by 9 p.m. If I get any emails after 9 p.m. regarding the correct words and phrases, I will not entertain them, okay? Now, whoever gets the most, right? So there'll be the top three winners I'm gonna pick. Um, so this is just a little fun thing. It's going to be, you know, these cases are so serious and so devastating on all counts. You know, it's like, why not introduce a lighter moment? I mean, not in any way to diminish the gravity of these cases or the situations of what the family are going through. But, you know, we don't ever want to take away from that. But this is just, like I said, my way of giving back to the community, right? So shall we get on with the, with the monthly reading, y'all? I don't know which glasses. Do I need my glasses? I don't know. I think I can see. I got my contact lenses, but we'll see. I had a little cheat sheet about uh, the planets. Oh, don't tell me I put away. Maybe not. Oh, there. Yeah, I do need my glasses. I'll go back to my little... My little thingy glasses, clear glasses. Oh God, this is grandma glasses, isn't it? Y'all, I got to say on a side note, these little glasses, I got a couple pairs actually. Um, this is from, uh, I don't know if it's from Marshalls or whether it is from TJ Maxx. Like they were uh, five bucks or something for three pairs. And I don't mind because I'm pretty rough with these. I don't want to spend $150 and buy a fancy, you know, pair uh, and just be all the time worried about where is it, where is it type of thing. I have one in my car. I have one in the bathroom. <laughs> uh, yeah, TMI, right? And then uh, I have one here on my desk, one in the living room, and then I'm perpetually searching for them because it's like, where are my glasses? So, and I don't mind. It's like, you know, they last for as long as they last. And, oh, well, it's okay. These are pretty good. These have lasted me uh, for a good, uh, I think, three, four months now. I think these two I might have bought it from TJ Maxx or, I don't know. I think this is from the dollar store, y'all. Absolutely. These are from the dollar stores because I got three. A dollar a piece and look they're quite sturdy and they are nice what is a black frame this is the slightly red frame and there's another one that's a tortoise shell frame literally from the dollar store like a dollar I'm like heck why not right um, so I love it just on a side note all right here we go ah now let's get into the the reading what's the time now? I got to watch it because I have a reading in about an hour let me set my alarm if I need to stop in the middle of the reading and do a part two I can definitely do that yeah, okay. you know like do as many uh, signs now and then do uh, another video for Girl, what is going on over here? Where is my pen? Unbelievable. Where do they run off though? Where did it go? Shoot. I'm telling you y'all. Okay, they have found one. So let's start with uh, Scorpio. Then we'll do Sag. Then Capricorn. Aquarius, one, two, three, four, Pisces, Aries, then we'll do Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo, and Libra. Okay, so what is the time now? Nine minutes, 40 seconds. Of course, I'll put up the timestamps, right? So, Scorpio, let's take a look at some of the astrology thingies. Now, one more thing I want to say with regards to the astrology aspect of it, y'all. 
there are different kinds of, or let's say, different schools of thought uh, as far as astrology is concerned, or branches, for lack of a better term, right? You have uh, you have the Vedic astrology, then you have the sidereal astrology, and of course the Western astrology, and what have you. So I go off of one particular type of astrology. Of course, I do read sidereal, I do read Vedic, whatever. But for these kind of time thingies, like, uh, let me... Yeah, this is all about, uh, what's the word, my, what's that, if your travel plans change, please contact, whatever, never mind, we don't want to get into that. So, like, I have it here, right? So, I'm going to read it out and I will put it in the description box. So, if it is even off by a day or so, it's okay, right? You decide which arm or which school of thought or which particular type of astrology you believe in and follow that, right? So there's no no harm, no foul. Based on sidereal astrology, this may be a day, a day off in terms of, you know, the dates. Based on Vedic astrology, this may be spot on. In terms of Western astrology, this could be a day too slow or whatever. So you uh, figure that out. So in terms of Scorpio, finally, oh my God, 11 minutes, hang on. 11 minutes 20 seconds all right scorpio on november 4th you have new moon in scorpio on november 5th you have mercury mercury enters scorpio on november 8th you have palace that goes direct on november 11th first quarter new moon on november 14th juno enters capricorn november 16th vesta enters sagittarius november 17th Jupiter, semi-square Chiron, November 19th, full moon, uh, partial lunar eclipse. November 21, Sun enters Sag. November 24, Mercury enters Sagittarius at zero degrees. Um, November 26, Saturn, sextile Chiron, and Chiron is also like it goes back and meets up with Saturn. Okay, so Chiron retrograde and then meets up with Saturn. On 27th, the last quarter, new moon okay so this is it let's get on with what we have for my beautiful uh scorpios for this month overall energy for my scorpios for the month of november i think i already did the year ahead reading for scorpio I think I already did that. I have to do year ahead reading for Sagittarius. I'll put it up. I was supposed to do it uh, yesterday, but mm, couldn't. Okay. Overall energy for the month of November is water. Of course, water, uh, Scorpio is like Cancer and like Pisces are water energies, right? So nothing new about that. And we have the Wheel of Fortune, which is fantastic. Here, you guys, I forgot to turn the, turn the, can you see? Oh, I thought I had this. There you go, right? You can see, right? There you go. Let me move this away a little bit. We don't need all of this here at the moment. Okay, you stay there, baby, okay? a little bit more space all right so we have the water and then we have um the wheel of fortune i hate when this happens y'all seriously yeah whatever i don't want to lower my chair because it's the correct height for me and i'm like yeah no we have water and then we have the wheel of fortune now with the Wheel of Fortune, right, as we all know, is uh, this card is ruled by Jupiter. And Jupiter is all about power, movement, uh, fortune. Uh, the wheel turns to reveal something new. There is progress. But keep in mind, when we talk about progress, right, uh, it could apply to any aspect of our lives. It could be it could be finances. It could be relationships. It could be health. It could be whatever. Um, uh, 
just progressive uh, and uh, positive. So there is a lot of luck there because it's Jupiter as well. And remember, Sagittarius is the first house for Scorpio. So that represents that your overall energy for the month could be pertaining to or could be regarding your personal self, how you present yourself, uh, how you look, look at yourself when you see yourself in the mirror, how people see you, how you present yourself to people, your persona, your physical appearance, your, your um, emotional like you, your mental like you, how you talk to people, how you interact with people, all those things. So there is a possibility that this month there could be a focus on that. Now, uh, it's not limited to this, but the overall energy is that, right? So again, if people have seen you a specific way and thought of you to be, let's say, for example, somebody out there thinks that, uh, let's call this Scorpio John Doe, thinks, oh, he's such a stuck in the mud or he's like this or he's like that they would be pleasantly surprised to find out you're not really a stuck in the mud, that you're actually quite the opposite. So again, it's all subject to how you present yourself. Now, this could also mean that coming out of the 12th house for you, right? Coming out of the 12th house, now you're in the first house. Um, you may have had a complete overall of overhauling of your image, of how your, your personality, maybe you lost a lot of weight, maybe you put on the much needed weight, maybe you had decided that you wanted to go to the gym and put, put on muscle mass, or you decided that you wanted to get fitter, or whatever the case may be, or you got a different haircut, or a new wardrobe, or whatever. So you've done all of that, including soul searching, and your, all the internal stuff that goes on too in your in your particular life and psyche and your karma, you finished all of that and now it's like that butterfly uh, coming out of the, I don't know, how shall I say it? The caterpillar turns into a butterfly, the butterfly comes out of the cocoon. That's right. Okay, so it's fantastic for you. I'm so excited because I think this year ahead for you is also going to be great. Now, where are my cards? Let's do this one. This deck is so cool, y'all. I absolutely love it. It's a line strider deck. I love it. And the designs on the cards are like so beautiful. Oh, I can't even. Right, let me show you just randomly. Right? Really cool. All right. When I first got them, I was like, get a little thin, you know, the cards, but it's okay, you know. People make a big fuss about it. And I suppose if it is too thin, then, you know, it'll get ruined faster or whatever. But I don't get stuck on those things. Okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. Oh, my God, the lover's card. <laughs> beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I love it. So we have the lovers, the three of swords. Then we have the king of cups, the ace of wands, and three of cups. Let me show it to you. Right? So I'm going to say that with the lovers card, this is pertaining to your relationships, obviously. And the lovers card is ruled by Gemini. Where is Gemini for Scorpio? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eighth house. Eighth house is your secrets, your sexual energy, regeneration, finances, wills, the occult, etc. Anywho, so we have the lover's card here. And the lover's card here is telling me that there is a possibility a relationship is coming to an end because you have a three, excuse me, three of swords. And the three of swords is saying, yeah, there's a little bit of you know, disappointment, a little bit of heartache. There's a little bit of... Uh, feeling deceived and god forbid you heard that that's my boy what are you doing snoring it's not even 12 silly um so <laughs> He cracks me up. Sorry, guys, there is a little bit of distraction there. So with the lover's card, there's a little bit of deception. There's a little bit of um, heartache over there, being let down, deceived, that sort of a thing. And then you have the king of cups. And the king of cups, again, considering the water energy, could be you yourself. 
And the King of Cups is like there is an overwhelming of emotions. Either you're completely like completely like overwhelmed and you're like just waiting to to expel all those emotions or you've completely shut down. I'm going to go with you completely shut down. This lover's situation with this, I think you have completely shut down. As far as this particular relationship, it's like done, there's no going back. And then you have the Ace of Wands. And the Ace of Wands, as we all know, there is this, this absolute need to continue to create something new, the urge to move forward. And you're like, all right, fine, shut it down. We're good, good, moving on, moving on. Yeah, you move on. Beautifully so. And then you have the Three of Cups. And the Three of Cups is saying, yeah, there is going to be uh, a lot of friendship, uh, celebrations, uh, a circle of support because people do see what has transpired here and they would be a hundred percent supportive of you so whatever the situation is you are definitely going to come out of it you're going to be fine as hurtful as it is yeah i understand but stay strong because the, your support your circle of friends your support whoever family they are completely going to be instrumental in getting you out of this uh, funk that you are in f-u-n-k okay don't misread my words i didn't say the other bad word uh, it's like saying it's a funky situation right f-u-n-k-y that's what i mean people don't get their knickers in a twist about it good lord we know that happens right what was i going to look at where are my energy cards <sighs> where i just had them here oh here duh y'all i get i get like i don't know yeah, come on, buddy. There we go. This is beautiful. Grasp the essence of infinity. If life is infinite, then this is not life. Grasping this concept will connect you permanently to the infinite source of creation that intends everything. By seeing yourself as an infinite being, the fear of death is forever eliminated. How cool is that? And why is this thing messing up? So how does that pertain, how does this pertain to you? What, the, what is going on here? Understand that life goes on first and foremost. However traumatic this relationship might have been, life goes on. It is what it is. There was a purpose. There was a reason why this person was in your life for as long as he or she was. There's a reason why this person is not going to be in your life. Okay, you might have had lessons to teach him or her or they might have had lessons to teach you. So whatever it is, that karmic thing is paid, that balance is, it's come back. It was off kilter a little bit and now it's balanced out and it's like, okay, you're back to the zero position or the neutral position and moving on. Understand that this is not, this is not limiting in any way. Okay. You have infinite opportunities. Life in and unto itself is infinite. So who knows what else there is out there for you. Okay. So my beautiful Scorpios, and again, I think this year is going to be fantastic for you all, Scorpio. Uh, if I remember right, I did the the um, the annual reading, you know, year ahead. I thought I... Uh... Okay, who else do we have? 2356, now we have Sagittarius at 24 minutes. Five seconds and of course my camera froze just when I wanted to do Sagittarius all right Sagittarius so again let me read this house November 4th new moon in Scorpio November 5th Mercury enters Scorpio November 8th palace goes direct November 11th first quarter moon November 14th Juno enters Capricorn November 16th Vesta enters Sagittarius November 17th Jupiter semi square Chiron November 19th, full moon, partial lunar eclipse. November 21st, sun in Sagittarius. Whoop, whoop, right? <laughs> or should I say whoop, whoop? <laughs> November 24th, Mercury enters Sagittarius. November 26th, Saturn, sextile Chiron. 
uh, and November 27th, last quarter moon. All right. So my beautiful Sagittarians, I think I may have just enough time to do, who do we have after Sag, Capricorn, and then I'll have to do another video, which is okay. So Sagittarius, here we go. That's because I have a personal reading to do, y'all, at 12 noon, so I will uh, overall energy. We have the moon card. Ooh, something is hidden, yo. Whoopsie. And we have, oh my God, two moon cards. Overall energy is the moon. Wow, uh, that is a bit... Sagittarius, what is hidden here for you guys? Shoot. New Moon and Scorpio. So Scorpio is your 12,000. 12,000 is karma, hidden supports, institutions, etc. And then you have your partial new moon, partial full moon lunar eclipse on the 19th. And then... Wow. So there is something that is seriously hidden for y'all for this month. Like big time. Something going on behind the scenes. Something going on behind the scenes. We have the magician, we have temperance, we have four of pentacles, wow. We have the star card, we have the six of wands and three of pentacles. This is beautiful, oh my goodness. I wish my camera would come back up so I could show you the cards, y'all, Sagittarius. I was a little bit kind of a little bit uh, concerned here because I was like, wait a second, uh, why are both the moon cards showing up for overall energy? Like I was like, what's going on? What is so hidden? What is so hidden? But I feel like after the uh, new moon in Scorpio, everything is going to be fine because you're coming out of the 12th house. And uh, like I said, 12th house is karma, hidden supports, institutions. You're going and working on your inner self, on your you know emotions, your mental state, etc., etc., and then you come out, which is your first house, and boom, you have the magician, the temperance, the four of pentacles, the star, the three of pentacles, and six of wands. Hello, honey. All right, with the magician, your birthday month, November. Your, you have the opportunity, the ability, the, uh, the wherewithal, the skill sets required to create your own magic. Understand this with the magician card, okay? You have the ability to summon new ideas, new projects, start it off, get it off the ground, it coming to completion, coming to fruition. But there's a very big responsibility with the magician. So be careful what you wave your magic wand for or on, okay? Then we have temperance. Hello, Sagittarius is showing yourself because uh, here you have, even though you have this uh, magic wand and the universe is saying, look, here, we give you the magic wand, go create your own magic. I said, be careful because temperance is right there and temperance is saying, listen, honey bunches of oats, you need to find a perfect balance. It's not all about just going and waving uh, the magic wand willy nilly and just like whatever, like a crazy psycho. You need to make sure that you temper your urge your need to create whatever this is or new uh, or some new ideas or projects or create you have to have a good blending of the essences you have to have a good balance you have to know and understand like what is going to best suit you because we're talking about balance right what is going to bring balance into your life that sort of a thing you can't just go wave the magic wand however you want Four of Pentacles is saying, yes, you're going to hold on a little bit to your insecurities. You still have a little bit of insecurities and you're also going to literally hold on to money. Okay, so whatever funds you have or finances you have, you're not going to be so quick to spend. We all understand that uh, in general, Sagittarians, like 
they actually money just goes through their fingers right literally so you're going to hold on to your finances and you're also holding on to something and your 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 emotions maybe your your money yourself a little bit insecure because you're like oh my god i got this magic wand what do i do what do i do you're kind of a little bit worried about those things and a little bit insecure whether you're going to be doing the right thing you will because we have the star card the star card is aquarius it's all about hope and inspiration for um uh, for whatever you intend to do always being inspired as we all know hope is the last to die and Sagittarius are the quintessential explorers of the zodiac signs, right? So they're always moving forward. They're always hoping for, they're always expecting to find something newer and bigger and better through Jupiter in the mix. Now Aquarius is the third house from you. And the third house is about your immediate environment and your short trip. So there is a high possibility that this exploration could be something that is in your immediate environment. What do I mean by that? Could it be your, could it, oh, your backup. Let me show you the cards. Okay, beautiful, beautiful cards. I love it. It's so cool. Okay, so what do I mean by immediate environment? It could be your physical immediate environment, right? Meaning your area, etc. It could also be something uh, that is in your immediate environment. Like for example, if you've already started a new project or a new job or whatever it is, and you... Um, you just want to explore or expand on it or take it forward or carry it forward or build it for build it more that is something that is immediately there because you had already established it you just need to build on it so and it could also mean that you may be traveling a little bit like short trips like okay so that's a possibility and of course Sagittarius love to travel so definitely there's travel for you in this month and then you have the three of pentacles which is beautiful because the three of pentacles is saying that people are watching you people are observing you people are like okay you know you may not know how many people are watching and observing you but people are watching you and observing you and they are they're like wow this person is really awesome and i really appreciate what they're doing they're doing a good job you know now they've proven themselves to to me but you're like i didn't even know i had to prove myself to you but yeah that's because you never knew people who were watching you so they are now convinced that you're very capable you are everything that you claim to be and they are willing to extend their help to you and they're also willing to invest in you and they are coming here and giving you the thing the um, money and saying hey now we are willing to invest it could be literally money it could be their resources in whichever way shape or form which is fantastic and again remember with the star card star is a star card is all about hope and inspiration and also getting help from an unexpected source so it ties in beautifully and then hello honey bunches of oats you got the six of wands which is the victory being successful having that victorious uh, whatever you know bringing the victory flag home etc etc so whatever it was that the new i mean the moon cards that we had all that's going to be clarifying because you've already crossed the 12th, uh, 12th house because uh, when we were in the sign of Scorpio, you're done with the 12th house, right? And then you're moving into the first house, which the new moon enter, the sun enters Sagittarius on the 21st. So until then, you're in the 12th house. So that's why all that moon thingamajiggy is going on because the moon is... Uh, the luna is all about the moon is all about a water element and scorpio is a water element and the 12th houses are all about that hidden stuff your emotions your this your that everything so you're going through, you're you're done with all of that and a new you is stepping out which is beautiful i love it love it love it i won't complain i won't complain perfect this is a beautiful card very very apt it says feel superior to no one it says release your need to feel superior by seeing the unfolding of spirit in everyone don't assess others on the basis of their appearance achievements and possessions it's an old saw but it nonetheless but is nonetheless true we are all equal in the eyes of god so what this is saying is it's calling for you to be modest and be balanced and be realistic Remember talking about balance, clearly it's asking you to not jump onto your high horse and think you're better than all and sundry because in all honesty, none of us are better than anybody else. 
right? In the sense that our true soul, our true spirit, right? Well, then people will say, well, Kirtana, there are a lot of crazy psycho people. How can you say that none of us are better than anybody else? To that, I'm going to say, how many people are really born evil, right? Truly. And how many people take on that path because of certain circumstances or situations that they've experienced in life, their environment. So if you really want to look at it from the purest, most simple, most uh, divine uh, eyes, then none of us are any better than anybody else. I hope I'm making sense. Okay, <laughs> moving on. Where's my little card that I was writing down the times? Next we have, do I have time for a Capricorn? Yeah, I think I'll do Capricorn. 35. Oh wait, no, yeah, 35. Okay. I might have to do uh, stop at Capricorn because like I said, I have a reading at 12 and then I'll do another video for the rest, uh, one, the rest of the nine signs, no worries. All right, my beautiful Capricorns, here we go. What do we have for you? So uh, this, uh, again, let me read this out. Capricorn, FYI, November 4th, new moon in Scorpio. November 5th, Mercury enters Scorpio. November 8th, palace goes direct. November 11th, first quarter, new, first quarter moon. November 14th, Juno enters Capricorn. November 16th, Vesta enters Sagittarius. November 17th, Jupiter Semi-square Chiron, November 19th, full moon, partial lunar eclipse. November 21st, Sun and Sagittarius. November 24th, Mercury enters Sag. November 26th, Saturn sextile Chiron. And Chiron actually goes retrograde and meets up with Saturn. 27th, last quarter moon. All right. You're not going to snore anymore, Puka? Huh? Why are you snoring so much? It's not even 12 o'clock. No, no, I am not doing getting up off my seat right now. I'm not. Don't come and make baby eyes to me. Puppy dog eyes. No, that's gross. Get away from me. What you need? Oh, you got boogers in your eyes, puppy. You know I hate it. Hang on. Hang on one minute. Pupa. Wait. Don't be naughty. That is gross. Ugh, nasty. Mm, I love you too. No, I'm not getting up. I got work to do. You can go lay yourself down for a little bit, baby. Don't even. See that? See, I'm walking. I look at everybody's looking at you and they're saying, what a spoiled little shyster. What, Puka? No, baby, I got to do this. You have to wait. You can wait. Yes. Don't even. I shouldn't have spoke to him because it's like waking up the bear. Waking up the bear. My Saint Bernard. My Saint Saint Bernard. Yes, you're such a silly boy. Yes, I love you too. Are you? Yeah? Did you? Okay, no, 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 don't. Hey, 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 quit. You're going to drop something there. You're going to, no. No, go lay down. So last night, Mark and I decided to take him for a little bit of a walk, like his fourth walk for the day. Get out of the trash, silly. And, oh my God, he's right behind me now. He's going to sit right behind me. I won't even be able to push back my chair. Okay, go. You can't go that way. All the wires, you're going to pull my computer. Puppy, back up, go. That's it, enough. Are you stuck? Bunny, go. Oh my goodness. Back up, back up, back up, good boy, back up. You got it. Oh my God, you guys. No, go, you're good. So, long story short, I'm sorry about the distraction because you know, we're all about squirrels, right? So we decided to take him for his, I don't know, fourth walk, fourth or fifth walk, whatever it was for the day. And there were some kids who were doing trick-or-treating and we have some neighbors around here who have all those decorations up, you know, for uh, uh, Halloweens. And so we kind of took a walk down that cul-de-sac and we saw the, these parents and their two kids and they're like, oh my God, is that the Saint Bernard? Can we pet him? Can we pet him? And, you know, we know Bernie because he is absolutely, <laughs> has no 
aggression towards people or other pets or kids or anything he's is really a sweetheart so uh, and he is uh, whatever the cause of those evaluations they do they, we were actually told that he uh, would do very well as a therapy dog so anyhow and so i always tell the kids you know if it's okay with your parents then absolutely you can you can you can pet uh, my dogs and if the parents were like oh yeah absolutely and then this other random lady who was like 50 feet away from us she comes out with a little bit uh, of those uh, uh, with a little uh, what you might call those doggies cane terriers i think um i have the charm here actually of that exact breed and she was like literally 50 100 feet away from us and she makes a beeline towards us and she's like oh i think i think our pups have met each other and she literally literally drops her leash and that little shit dog okay charges at bunny and gets him like by his ear over here and i was like whoa what's going on and then immediately bunny kind of growled and i i was like okay i stopped it i was like because he was attacked he was passive he was watching these when being petted and loved on by these two little kids and the uh, these kids and the parents and this random ding dong dog out of nowhere comes charging at him and i was immediately caught that dog and i was like lady come and get your dog because i lost it y'all i really lost it i said come and get your dog what is wrong with you who asked you to drop the leash no we don't know who you are we've never met and how do you assume that our dogs are met clearly not and then mark was right there and he's like okay okay let me deal with it i got mad at mark too i said no i'm going to talk to her oh i let her i ripped her a new one y'all seriously i got so mad see it's okay if the dog kind of pulled out of her hand and ran at us that's okay all right fine whatever i would understand it if it's a bigger dog it's one of those little terrier dogs dum dum she dropped the leash she literally dropped the leash like saying go Oh I got so mad at her. Thankfully he was not bit and he's such a sweet dog, you know. He's not he he like I said when we take him for doggy daycare on him and there's another little mop dog. They are the only two dogs that they let them play with all other class of dogs, a size of dogs, a temperament of dogs because he's so neutral. He's like so chill. And I got so mad at her and Bunny, he was so rattled by that when we came back home. he was literally like so agitated walking up and down walking up and down and i had a reading at 9 no was it 8 o'clock i think it was 9 o'clock 8 o'clock last night i believe because now i have to look right because it matters so much to me 8 o'clock last night i had a reading and this was for a gentleman from australia so um and i had to get done with the reading it was really very good positive lovely but he wouldn't leave my side and he kept walking around walking around and finally I had to shut this door and I told Mark I said can you keep him for a few because I don't want to be distracted and he had been like a little bit traumatized by that I feel and I told Mark I said later today I'm going to go down and drop a little note in the mailbox because I know where they live I'm like you can't do that you can't just drop your leash literally encouraging your dog to go attack when you know your dog and then after all this here's what really gets me off she says oh and i got mad i said you little shit like those are the exact words i used on that dog and she's like oh yeah he's like that he's he's always like that regardless of which dog and i'm like you stupid clown if you know your dog is aggressive then you should not have dropped the leash in the first place and then she yanks him and she's like bad dog bad dog i'm like you are a nut job lady the dog does not know any better you should have trained that dog in the first place you should have socialized the dog in the first place clearly you haven't you've let him go off on his own tangent there and he's developed bad habits because he has no no direction they're like kids they are like kids they need structure they need to be taught this is acceptable behavior this is not acceptable behavior this is how you need to socialize them if you if they don't have that structure how do they know any better i was so mad at her y'all oh my god that woman is oh. <sighs> we have another one of those he's a pitbull and a jack russell terrier 
They live right on top of our street over here. That dog to a little black and white little piece of whatever. Um, and again, I personally don't blame the dogs because they don't know any better, right? The first time I took Bernie for a, when we had just moved in here, I took Bernie for a walk over there. Out of nowhere, this dog charged out and he came running across the street. I saw him and I immediately yelled and I said, get back, get back kind of thing. And Bernie was by my side. He just stood still and kind of, kind of did that. And the dog went back. And that doofus dude, he comes out of the garage and I don't know, whatever the dog's name, he said, come here, come here, whatever. And the dog went back in. I said, uh, could you contain your dog? Because the dog had left their property and crossed the street and come to us. And he was on a leash. So I'm like, can you control your dog? And he says, oh, sorry. So that happened. Two weeks later, we go for a walk out of nowhere again because that fellow leaves his dog off leash in the yard, in the front yard. And that dog actually came charging at us and he actually bit Bernie on his lip and he got a little bit of a thing and he, because he caught Bernie, you know, <laughs> Bernie being a tall, tall dog, he caught him at his lip and I kind of, whatever, and he dropped and then I didn't, I was like, whatever, I got mad at that guy. I'm like, dude, this is the second time your dog has charged at us, you know. I'm that close to actually reporting you all to the animal control people, okay. I will go file a complaint because your dog is leaving your property premises, your property line and coming across the street to attack us. We, have, we are nowhere near your property. So if you are saying you know, we are on your property, then okay, your dog is protecting whatever. And then his wife comes out and she goes, I'm so sorry about it. And she's yelling at the husband and she's saying, I told you so many times, we should send him away. We should put him down again. You don't train your dog. You don't have structure at home. You don't teach them right from wrong. Like we should teach our kids. There is no, there are no parameters. There are no checks and measures. And then you call the dog a bad dog and you want to put the dog down. How? So that happened. Then about six months after that we are on our property here okay well within our driveway literally five six feet away from the main door and this fool comes walking with his dog that little terrier and the pit bull mix and that dog he's got one of those snap leashes you know that extend and come back i don't know what happened it must have been old or whatever it snapped out and it came charging at us and got to Bernie, like literally about a foot and a half from Bernie. Mark, he was raking the yard. He had that rake and he kind of put that rake in between. Of course, none of the dogs got hurt to stop him. And the dog just stopped right there and constantly barking. So with the rake, Mark started pushing, not like literally pushing, but with the rake, he started moving this way, trying to get the dog away from our drive yard. And that fool, he's standing there. He's not even coming to get his dog. Remember, his dog is on our property. He's just standing there. He's just watching everything. He's not even coming forward to say, I'm so sorry. Oh, let me get my dog. Nothing. And Mark doesn't lose his temper at all. Like hardly ever. I kind of flare up here and there, but he, oh, actually more than here and there, <laughs> truth be told. But he just went and like literally like said, dude, this is the third time. This is absolutely unexpected, uh, unacceptable. And uh, we are not confrontational people, man. I mean, shit happens in life, whatever. But then three times, and all the three times your dog has attacked us, when we are nowhere on your property, nowhere near your property, actually running across the street to attack us, and here coming on to our property to attack. So we finally said, okay, this is enough. And then we did call the animal control. And then they went, I don't know what they did. And uh, he was like, you know, they take down the information. So we went to the animal control and we did uh, tell them this, this, and this. And we had taken, I had taken pictures of Bernie when his lip was thing, whatever. I said, look, I don't want the dog to be put down. I don't, I love animals. But if you can retrain the dog, okay, if you can, or worst case scenario, rehome him to somebody who better understands the breed and who can manage and teach them right from wrong, I'm okay with it. But I would feel really bad if you were to put down the dog. So, I don't know what happened for a good two, three weeks. We didn't see the dog. And then all of a sudden the dog was back. And now what he does in his yard, he's got those long chains. 
he ties up the dog uh, to whatever there and if he's in the yard the dog is on the long leash but the leash doesn't extend out onto the to the street so oh my god sorry y'all i suppose i have to uh, make that how many minutes did i oh my god i ranted for a good 15 minutes shoot 49.50 yeah maybe i'll just delete that part of it okay all right capricorns capricorn there has to be a rant right y'all so sorry fire Ooh, capricorn you are you are going into november will be your uh, 12th house kind of you know for you no no shuffle the world Ooh, hot 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 baby you got the fire and you got the world card which is like let's see what's gonna go on here capricorns oh you know what i'm not gonna take it because i wasn't even done shuffling so let's shuffle once this one this guy uh, no let us shuffle the world is at your feet capricorn you're on fire that's better king of wands definitely ten of wands nine of wands nine of swords strength beautiful love it love it this is fantastic right beautiful i love it so with the fire card definitely 12th house right you're in your 12th house season sagittarius is your 12th house which is natural right so all 12th house matters will be of uh, uh, relevance to you this month your karma your hidden supports institutions etc all that good kind of stuff we have some planetary action also here right let me see what do we have oh yeah juno enters uh capricorn on the 14th okay so we have the king of wands ten of wands nine of wands nine of swords and the strength card a lot of fire energy a lot of sagittarius aries and leo energy king of wands definitely leo nine take action this month is asking you to take action let your burdens down set your burdens not let your burdens down set your burdens down you're right you're 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 done set your burdens down but you know what why are you still hanging on to it i feel like it's almost uh, a case of um of uh, what's the word yeah. this confinement this burden that you've been carrying it's almost like become your source of comfort like it's almost like a codependency toxic type of a situation stop why are you doing that to yourself set it down you should be good you're done with your 12th house take action move forward be bold be the type of person who's willing to take action and go forward enough of all this burden bull crap set it down a nine of wands right and what is the nine of wands saying the nine of wands is saying like yeah you know you have to be persistent you have to keep within your boundaries you have to keep within your limitations but also there is a certain percentage of uh, feeling free i feel like you it, even though this is a nine of wands card i'm getting the energy of a eight of wands card okay and uh, the eight of wands is it's all about i'm sorry not eight of wands eight of swords card because i feel like you are bound you are <laughs> not eight of wands let me correct that eight of swords card because i feel like you are restricting yourself like you are almost afraid to let go of the burden because it's a little bit comforting for you no let it go stop get out of your own head and having said that i'm going to say you need to be persistent you need to be focused you need to be able to concentrate so that this new found freedom this lighter self that you have come to find because not then you'll be moving into your first house um soon in december you will have the ability to take off right so this is your opportunity to set the burden down if you don't set your burden down this time your 12th house if you don't set it down you're going to continue have this monkey on your back 
You're going to continue to have this monkey on your back and it's going to restrict you. You're always going to be like feeling, oh my God, oh my God, you know. No, don't do that. Then you have the nine of swords. And the nine of swords is about nightmares, anxiety and depression. And I'm going to say, listen, listen, why the anxiety? Why the depression? You know why? Because you have you have restricted yourself. You have to get out of yourself. Even though this is nine of wands, I said I feel the eight of swords energy because you have bound yourself to this situation. You are getting complacent. You feel like if you set the burden down, what are you going to do? All of a sudden, you're going to feel lighter. You won't know what to do with yourself. Stop with that nonsense. Stop with the anxiety. Stop with the grief. Stop with the depression. You you brought it on. You brought it on yourself. Get on with it. And then you have the strength card, and the strength card is saying, look. Look at this. You have the lion over here, the first card and the last card, also the lion. Listen, and they're both facing each other. They're both facing each other. The lion is facing this way, the strength card is facing this way. You, the strength card is saying, which is Leo, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and uh, eight houses, your finances, regeneration, Come on, get out of your, a lot of secrets, a lot of holding on, a lot of secrets. Stop with all the nonsense. You have to find the strength within yourself to get out of this little rut that you have created, R-U-T, that you have created. Um, and you kind of sat in it and you're like, oh, this is so comfortable. No, no, enough. Enough of that nonsense. Get the heck out of there. Because if you sit there, that, that little rut, oh, sorry. That little rut, that little thingamajiggy crater that you've created is going to get deeper, deeper, deeper. You want to sink further, further, further. And then it'll be so difficult for you to climb out of there. So stop with this nonsense and get out of this now. Because if you don't, you have to find the strength within yourself to do that. You just have to. Nobody's going to come and say, oh, you poor baby. No. <laughs> no. Nobody's going to say that. You need to get yourself out of this situation. And you can. You will find the strength. You just need to stay focused. Be kind. Be kind to yourself. It says, treat yourself and others with kindness when you eat, exercise, play, work, love, and everything else. When you think, feel, and act kindly, you listen. You hasten your ability to connect to the power of intention. Do I have to say anything more? First and foremost, be kind to yourself. Secondly, if you are kind to yourself, you will understand what your soul really needs. And then you will be able to get on with it. Come on, Capricorn. Chop, chop, I say. <laughs> okay. All right, you guys, I'm going to have to stop this video right now. I will post another video with the other sun signs, right, for the monthly readings because I have a personal reading I have to get on, on the phone right now. So much love to you all. Watch out for the other videos. Okay. Thank you, you guys.